What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again with the recent release of the all new AMD Ryzen 8700G and of course the Ryzen 5 8600G, I figured it was time to do a new small form factor APU build. In this video, we're going to be using the new 8700G, but keep in mind, if you wanted to keep the price down a bit, you could go with the 8600G. It's not going to perform quite as well as the one we're going to be putting together, but uh, you know, it will keep that cost down up front, but it's up to you in the end. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of the new AMD 8000 series G chips, and right here we've got that 8700G. This thing is absolutely amazing. We've got built-in RDNA 3 graphics, which do perform quite well. In fact, we can game at 1080p with most new AAA games on this thing without a dedicated GPU. And this is going to allow us to build a very small footprint gaming PC. I've got a lot to go over in this video, we're also going to be doing some testing on this rig, but before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay, they even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So obviously, the heart of this build is going to be the brand new AMD Ryzen 7 8700G. Throughout the video, I will go over the parts used, and if you're interested in putting something together just like this, I'll leave links down below. It does come with a box cooler. It's actually the Wraith Spire, but for the case that I'm going to be using, the Spire is a bit high, so I do need to go with a different cooler, because even though I'm using the all-new NWIN Chopin Mac, which NWIN has recently updated to fit up to a 54mm cooler, we just can't fit the Spire in here. But this is the case we're going with here, and I absolutely love this thing. It's known as the NWIN Chopin Max. And one of my favorite things about this case is it does come with its own power supply. It's a 200 watt power supply, which is perfect for these APUs. And with the new upgraded version, they've also added USB Type-C. But as you can see, I mean, we've got a very small form factor case here meant for a mini ITX APU build. And speaking of Mini ITX, for the motherboard, I'm going with the MSI MAG B650i Edge Wi-Fi. This is one that I've used in the past with the 7700X and a dedicated GPU, but the BIOS has recently been updated here. Awesome cooling for the VRM, great cooling for that M.2, and it does support these 8000G CPUs with the BIOS update. And you can actually update the BIOS on this without a CPU or even with the CPU installed. It doesn't need to boot in order to do it. It's got the one-click BIOS button on the back of the board. And I highly recommend something like this with these newer chips. Now, one of the most important things for these APUs is RAM speed. Since we're on an AM5 platform, we do need to use DDR5. I've actually got a few different choices here, but I want to go basically as fast as I can to get the best performance out of this. And MSI claims that this B650 Edge Wi-Fi model will do up to 7200 plus, but I've been doing some testing and what I'm actually going with is Patriot's new Viper Venom RGB RAM, 32 gig kit here, dual channel, 7400 mega transfers per second. Like I mentioned, I have done some testing with this specific chip and motherboard. We can reach those speeds. AMD has come out and specifically said that, you know, 6,000 to 6,400 mega transfers per second is really a nice sweet spot there, but going higher can definitely net better performance. And again, given the case constraints, the box Spire cooler isn't going to fit inside of here. Would be really nice if it did, but what I've got here is a Thermalright AXP90. It's a 53 millimeter tall cooler, and I've tested this in the past. I've actually used it on older chips. Never had an issue, but these do run at higher wattages, so we'll definitely have to get in and see what the temps are. And once everything's put together, it looks a little something like this. I actually think it went together really nicely. And obviously, we've got a really small form factor case here, so cable management can be a bit of pain. But Inwin has left some room up front to kind of tuck those cables in, and it's really not that bad. Okay, so I've got Windows 11 installed, and by the way, I'm using a 1TB Kingston Fury M.2 SSD here. 
As you can see, very, very small Xbox controller right next to it, just to give you kind of an idea on the size. And personally, with these Chopin cases, I like setting them up vertically, but you could always set them horizontally if you want to. I mean, it's a console-sized PC case. Real quick, give you a look here. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 8700G, 8 cores, 16 threads. It's based on Zen 4. And of course, we've got that Radeon 780M RDNA 3 based iGPU. 12 compute units up to 2900 megahertz. I've got that 32 gigabytes of Viper Venom RAM installed here, running at 7400 megatransfers per second. And the first thing I did was run a few benchmarks. When it comes to Geekbench 6, the 8700G in this little system scored a single core of 2,625, multi 14,312. This benchmark isn't taking in consideration of the iGPU, strictly CPU performance, and I wanted to give you a look at the AMD Ryzen 7 7700X benchmarks that I found online. Single core, 2904. Multi, 15,237. I mean, it's definitely keeping up with that 7700X, but another thing we got to keep in mind is we're kind of limited by our power right now with this mini ITX build. I've seen the TDP on this and total TDP between the iGPU and the CPU jump up to around 100 watts, but in my testing on higher end boards, I've actually been able to get this thing to pull around 138 watts. Now, I'm really limited by my thermal headroom and this smaller cooler, but there's a chance, I mean, we can get right up there with that 7700X. Next up, we've got some GPU benchmarks using 3 d Mark. Firestrike came in with a really impressive 9,258. And I'll tell you right now, we've tested the 7800M iGPU in mobile variants before. Fastest RAM we can get in those was around 5,600, but we're up to 7,400 mega transfers. This is the highest score that I've seen in Firestrike out of any iGPU so far. But with Time Spy, I've actually seen a bit more out of the 8700G and a better motherboard. So uh, power management is going to be a big thing. And don't get me wrong, coming in with a score of 3,854 on an iGPU is awesome, but we have been up into the 3900s with this chip already. But these are synthetic benchmarks, and now it's time to check out some real gaming. And the first thing I wanted to know here is, can it run Crisis? Here we are, 1080p, medium-low mix. Not too bad, but uh, when I go straight to medium settings, I do notice some dips really close to going under 60. Here's Borderlands 3, 1080p, medium settings. We're getting an average of around 72 FPS, which really isn't that bad, but every once in a while, I do notice a hiccup here and there. And I really do think that there are some issues with this new driver from AMD. So uh, as soon as those are fleshed out a little bit, we will see kind of smoother performance out of games like this. Starfield was one that I really wanted to test, and I knew we weren't going to get 60 FPS out of this game. Even at 720p with the lowest settings, we still get dips under 60. Right now, we're in a city called Jemison, 1080p, low, FSR is set to 50% resolution scale, and I'm seeing an average of around 38 FPS. The next thing I wanted to check out was OG Skyrim at 1440p, high settings, and yeah, I mean, it can definitely run it. I also went through and I tested Left 4 Dead 2 and Half-Life 2. Very high settings with both of those games at 1440p is possible on the new 8700G. Now I will tell you, I wouldn't mind making a video 1440p gaming on this little system here. With newer stuff, we could run a lot of the stuff at 1440p 30 FPS, but with these older games, we could definitely go up to 60 and even past. Forza Motorsports. If you've played this game on PC, you know we've had issues since day one. Right now, I'm at 1080p, kind of the auto preset there, just kind of chooses everything for you, with FSR set to balance. I'm getting an average of around 70 FPS, and I was really, really stoked about this. Now, of course, we're not at the highest settings, and I'm pretty sure this kind of defaulted down to low. We're at that auto preset that they have, and to tell you the truth, I hate the way they have the graphics settings set up with this game. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is playable. God of War, 1080p, original settings, FSR, set to balance. We can now play this over 60 FPS on an iGPU. And if you take a look at my CPU package power, this does jump up to around 100 watts. Remember, it needs to send power to all eight of those cores plus that iGPU. And with this little board, I think we're kind of locked there at around 100 watts.
The final game I wanted to show off here was Cyberpunk 2077, but instead of just going in and messing around with the settings, we're actually going to be enabling AMD's new HyperRX technology. And with the latest update to this 780M iGPU, we've actually got access to AMD's fluid motion frames. And it's now built into the HyperRX profile for Cyberpunk 2077. So once we enable this, it's also going to turn on Radeon Super Resolution, the uh, new fluid motion frames, anti-lag, and Radeon Boost. So this basically enables all of their technologies for this iGPU, and with Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p medium settings with HyperRX on, I'm seeing an average of around 72 FPS. Now with this chip, I can actually get much more out of this game by going down to low, messing around with the settings, turning FSR to performance, but I do think that this looks a lot better. And with HyperRX supported games, I've actually had pretty good luck with this new iGPU. So uh, this is really awesome. Can't wait to see what they do in the future. So overall, for this thing just to be powered by an iGPU, I think it's putting down some really great gaming performance. Now, if you go small form factor like this, you're kind of limited. So if you did want to pick up, let's say, an 8600G or an 8700G, you could also go with a larger build. That way, later on down the road, you can add a dedicated GPU. So you can game now on the iGPU, add a DGPU later on, and really up that GPU performance. But personally, I love these small form factor builds. This thing is absolutely tiny, and this case is really great for this little build here. They have upgraded that power supply from 150 to 200 watts, so we've got plenty here. And you saw it boost up to around 100 watts. Even this cooler did an amazing job. This is the Thermalrite X53, and if you're interested in building something like this, I will leave links to everything I used down below. Remember, don't skimp out on the RAM if you're looking to do some good iGPU gaming. Want to go dual channel, and the faster we can get it, the better performance we can get out of a system like this. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I will have more coming. Definitely want to test out some emulation on this new chip. And I've also got the 8600G on the way, so that video will be up soon. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.